So what's up, guys? What's up, man? I want to... So what's good, y'all? Today's video... What's good, y'all? Today's video, I want to talk about anxiety. And when I say anxiety, I mean anxiety in its most, you know, simplest form. Everybody goes through it, too. Anxiety problems, anxiety being a problem. And the reason I want to make this video is because last night, that's something I thought of. I was in the shower and I was thinking of this and thinking about my first experiences with anxiety and how, you know, how I even grew up and how it's just so different to, you know, certain people's experience. And... I want to make this video as, not as a professional, not as somebody who, you know, is licensed in this and even has any qualities or, you know, certificates or whatever to talk about this, but more as a friend, a friend that is really interested in the mind and, you know, anxiety and depression and all these things that really interfere with, you know, your highest potential. I want to come to you as that, not no professional, right? And I want to show you pictures. I want to show you some pictures. I want to paint you some pictures, you know, and kind of show you a path, show you two different paths and explain, you know, why, you know, this one, you know, is interfering with your goals and why this one is not. And kind of show you, you know, how to get over anxiety, if, you know, if, if that's something you struggle with. Um, so, yeah. But before I do all of that, right, I want to get into my first experience with anxiety. And we got to go back to my childhood for you to, I want to paint a cool five-minute picture for you. Um so you can understand my, 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 my framework and my mindset around anxiety, right? So growing up, grew up in the Caribbean, St. Lucia, shout out St. Lucia, shout out to all my St. Lucians that's probably watching this, or, you know, if you know about St. Lucia, you've been there, shout out to you. But I grew up in the Caribbean, right? And the word anxiety wasn't really a thing that was, you know, in my mind, it wasn't something that, of course I felt it, but it wasn't a, a, a conscious, uh, I'm feeling anxiety, I'm feeling anxious about something. It was never that. And one of the main reasons I feel like that is, is because I, as a kid, I was too busy to think about, it, and I was too spiritual and too just playful and just not thinking about anything, just wake up in the morning, eat, go play all day, come back home, and just repeat that process constantly. Or if it's school, go to school. You know, I was never too big on, you know, <laughs> studying school and making sure I had straight A's because my parents told me to. So I was never anxious about schoolwork because I was never interested in schoolwork. Um... So there wasn't really many things that, you know, I was ever anxious as. I don't ever remember being anxious, you know, as a kid. Unless it's like, you know, it's time to get your butt whooped and now you now you now you're scared, now you're fearful of that. Um but outside of that, I would I never really experienced it. Because I just feel like if my brain was never on it, I was too busy playing. I was too busy playing soccer. I was too busy building stuff, hanging out with my cousins, you know, just always moving, always busy. Um, so I never really thought about it. And then the term anxiety and even depression, it just it wasn't a big thing. It wasn't a labeling thing down there. You never heard somebody say, I have depression. Or I never heard somebody say, I have depression or anxiety. I just didn't know what they was. So I could never label myself as that. Even if at the time I might have felt it, 
you know, I, it wasn't something I'll keep labeling myself and saying I have anxiety, I have depression, I have this, I have that. It was never that. But my first first experience with that with anxiety wasn't even for me. Like, and when I say anxiety, I mean anxiety problem. When anxiety becomes a problem, it wasn't even for me. It was from a girl. So I got to the States 10 years ago. I just told you about how I grew up. Now I'm in the United States now. So I'm 22 now, around 18 years of age, I had a girl, um, a girlfriend at the time. Oh, not even a girlfriend. A girl I was talking to, right? And my first experience of anxiety attack or anxiety being a problem was through her, seeing what was happening to her and trying to understand it and asking her what's going on, like, why? Because I'll explain the situation. So we was hanging out like we always do, and randomly out of nowhere she started to panic and she started to... um kind of just sweat, shake, and I, I, I was confused on what was happening because it was out of nowhere. Um, I was confused on what was happening, so I asked her, like, what's, what's going on? She was telling me it's just an anxiety attack. I have these anxiety attacks, and that was my first time hearing about an anxiety attack. I never really experienced one of those. And I didn't know what to do. I was just like clueless and what to do. How to, how do you even, like, what do I do to help? So that happened. Of course, I just stayed there and just kind of just supported her through the whole attack period or whatever. Um, and later that night, that was so fascinating to me. I stayed up all night figuring figuring out researching what it was and how I can help her if it happens again and just trying to understand what happened. So I set up all night researching and it took me down a rabbit hole of just learning and learning about the mind. I was already previously going down that rabbit hole, but it took me even further down that. And I started to understand it more and understand um, why certain people have um, anxiety problems and, you know, all of that. How to solve it, how to, you know, cure it and how to relieve yourself from all that anxiety, right? Because at the end of the day, we all have anxiety. Like I said, we all feel it. But there's a point where it becomes a problem, where where you kind of um, neglect it a lot, um, and it just becomes a bigger and bigger, bigger, bigger and bigger problem, right? And there's certain things you can do that stops that problem or make that problem grow bigger, it makes you more anxious or less anxious. So that's what I want to talk about in today's video, um, and hopefully give you a mind frame or some points to cure anxiety or to relieve yourself from anxiety and just get you to your goals, get you to your higher self, get you to performing better, having a better life and all of that, having better relationships, having a better physical, mental body, all of that. So that's how I learned about anxiety. And let's get into this video though. Let me let me explain what I'm talking about now. So I have a little drawing right here and anxiety at the title of, of my little drawing, of course, right? And I have one path and another path and then the whole point of the paths is what path is gonna get you to your goals. We're trying to get to our goals and your goals is different from mine. Your goals can be whatever mine can be, whatever, right? We all have goals that's different from each other's. But I want to make this as general as possible and black as white, black and white as possible, you know? So 
these two paths is going to be general, you know, ideal paths and just most general straightforward paths as possible to show you the results of those paths and how that affects your brain, how that can make you anxious, how that can cause depression and all the things that happens up here, right? So we have path one and path two, right? So here's my little stick figure right here. This is, well, what should we name them? Uh, mm, what's, the, what's the name? So this is David and this is, mm, this is Ron. So let's this is David. David and this is Ron. Right? Or Dave, Davida and Ronita. Either way, right? If you're a woman and you want to hear woman names, right? Davida and Ron or David and Ron, right? And I want to paint this picture to show you how to kind of anyways, but you know what I'm saying right now. And I want to paint this picture to show you how the paths you choose is going to determine how much anxiety you face. You kind of create this monster and not only anxiety, depression, and like a self-confidence, all of that. All of this, you kind of create this monster, monster by the decisions you make, um, the path you take, right? And let me show you how. So we have David here. David, and this is kind of a representation of David's mind and environment. And same with Ron. So we have David, David, sorry, David cleans his room every day, right? Cleans his room, cleans his house. He has a clean house every day, clean room every day. Ron, opposite. Ron has a dirty room every day, dirty house every day, right? Um, right off the rip. And you might be wondering, why? What does that have to do with anxiety? A clean room or a clean house? What does that have to do with anxiety? Help me out. Let's, let's just keep going and I'll come back to that, right? Another one of David's traits. David eats healthy. Ron does not. Right? David is physically active. Ron is not. David takes accountability for all his actions, wrong or right. Ron lies and makes excuses. David self-reflects on those actions. Ron escapes via drug, alcohol, sex, gaming, movies, whatever. Right? Ron escapes. Ron through escaping and all of that, has bad relationships. David takes accountability, self-reflects. He has good relationships, which creates a positive outlook for David. Ron, with all of this, has a negative outlook on life. Now, with these two paths, right, who, who you think is going to have the most confidence? And confidence has to do with a lot. It's kind of the opposite of this. Anxiety and depression and all of that. Through this path, who do you think is going to have the most confidence? Of course, David, right? David's confidence levels is probably going to be all the way up here, right? All the way up here. Right? And his doubt levels, right? He might, he might, he might do all of this, still have some doubts. Still go through doubting yourself sometimes and all that. But where do you think those doubt levels are going to be? All the way down there. David don't really doubt himself. And if he does, he, he checks back in, right? So he has a low doubt level. Of course, doubt comes through his mind, but he gets it out, right? And doubt plays hand in hand with anxiety and all of that, depression, right? Now let's talk about Ron. What do you think Ron's confidence levels and self-esteem levels is going to be when his mind and environment is like this? Obviously not, not, not where David's is, of course. So Ron is going to be more down here, right? Ron is going to be more down here for confidence, if any at all, right? And what do you think his doubt and anxiety levels is going to be? 
it's gonna be let me let me hop on this side it's gonna be all the way up here Ron is gonna be full of doubt, full of anxiety, full of everything, right? Because of his choices, right? So, I wanted to paint that black and white picture for you to see how, you know, just your actions is gonna play big into anxiety and depression, right? Because when you wake up every let's let's now let's go back, right? When you wake up every morning and your room is kind of a mess, you come from work or you come from class and you walk straight into your room or your house and it's just a mess. That doesn't inspire any confidence, any you know relief. It's more like, damn, I walk into my room and what is this, man? It's just a hell pit in there. It's just a pig pen in there. It's dirty. It's just a mess. And opposite of that, let's say you having a you had a bad day and you walk into your room and it's clean, everything is clean, it smells good in there. It's like a relief to get into your room and not, oh, I just came from shit to hop back into shit and now you're just constantly always in shit, you know? So in that way, that's why I put cleaning your room and your house as, you know, kind of the first step. That's the first thing I um you should do every morning to 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 start your day off good just have a clean room make your bed at least right um and eating healthy right how does that how does that play into anxiety right how does that play into you know how you feel when you eat healthy we all know this you eat healthy you feel better you eat bad you feel bad You've ate something before and you automatically wanted to go to sleep. You've ate something before and you start to feel good, feel better about yourself, right? And I could deep dive more into that and why that happens. Talk about calories and all of that. And all calories is a unit of energy. So imagine you eating something good, you're going to get good energy. You eating something bad, you're getting bad energy, Right, that's gonna play all up, all up in your mind and your anxiety levels and all of that because the way you feel, right? Being active, right? Being active, like physically active. If you're not active and you're eating, you're eating uh, unhealthy. You're not active. You're gaining some weight. You're looking at yourself. You're not liking what you see, right? How do you think that's gonna affect affect your anxiety and depression level? It's going to big time because you know you're not living up to your standard and you're not doing as good as you can. Now, you're being physically active consistently and you're looking at yourself every day and you're seeing the improvements and you're seeing you're getting better. You're seeing your body's getting better. You're starting to feel good about yourself. Your self-esteem starts to rise, right? That also plays in this anxiety, anxiety pit, right? One more thing. I mean, something else, taking accountability for actions. You take accountability for all your actions. Your boss, let's say you did something wrong, your boss is getting on to you. Um, instead of taking accountability for it, you blame somebody else. Or in the household, you, you have a roommate, or you have a brother or sister, or you have your mom. You did something wrong, they're talking to you about it. You're taking accountability for it and you're fixing it, all right? On the other side, all right, you did something wrong. You're just lying about it. You're just making excuses all the time. You're never taking accountability. It's always somebody's fault. It's never your fault. Making lies and excuses. What is that thing? If you know you're lying, you're the only one, and most of the time people will know too, but there's times where you're the only one that knows you're lying. How do you think that 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 affects your self-confidence? When you know you're lying and you're constantly lying and nothing you said is true. You don't even believe yourself, but it, you just lie all the time. First, you're somebody who takes accountability and accept that they're wrong and changes. How do you think these two things are going to affect your confidence level? It's going to affect it big time because <laughs> your word is all you got. If you don't trust yourself, nobody's going to trust you, right? So, 
And to pivot off the accountability and action, let's go to self-reflection, right? With self-reflection, after you took, a, took accountability for that, whatever the problem is, whatever you did, now you self reflect and you say, okay, how can I fix it? How can I do better going forward, right? And you find out there's problems with self-reflecting and how to better that with self-reflecting, right? Flip side, wrong, lies, makes excuses. He never takes accountability. He knows he's a piece of shit. Well, he knows, I won't say a piece of shit. He knows his line. He knows he makes all his excuses. Instead of taking accountability, he escapes. He drugs, alcohol, sex. He just, you know, whatever. You know, my life is bad. I don't care. I'm just going to live it up, live in a moment, go drink alcohol, go, go, go do drugs, go, you know, find a high, find an escape all the time. Right? He doesn't self reflect. Again, how do you think when you don't fix this and you escape, how do you think that's going to affect your doubt levels of yourself? Like you're going to be more doubtful of yourself because you're not doing anything to fix yourself. It's just a whole mess. You're escaping. So your, re your reality becomes a lot more doubtful, right? You're going to doubt yourself more. Versus this, you took accountability, you found a problem. Oh my God, this is what it is. And this is why I do this. Oh my God, this is something from my childhood I used to do. And now I need to change it. You're self-reflecting. So now you're becoming more confident because you're becoming a better person. Who's calling me? That can wait. You're becoming a better person, right? So you becoming a better person betters your relationships. Now you have better relationships. And now you have people you can really trust and you're going to get good. You're going to find good relationships because when you're, when you, when you, when you're mastering all of this and you, you know, you're being a better you, you're going to know what the good relationships are. You're going to, you're going to see right from wrong. So you're going to have better relationships. You're going to manage your relationships better. You're going to take accountability where you're wrong in relationships and that heals relationships. All of that, right? So you're going to have good relationships versus when you're like this. And again, this is black and white. So obviously, David can be physically active, but he lies and makes excuses, right? So it's kind of, you just kind of have to understand the black and white first and then kind of see where you're at and what you need to fix in your life, right? So... Yeah, back to this. So, imagine this, Ron. How is Ron gonna have a bad, a good, good relationships when he lies and makes excuses, escapes all the times, and wrong crowd when you're escaping? You're not never gonna find the right crowd, right? Not active. He doesn't. He's not positive. He's not confident in himself. He doubts himself a lot. How do you think he's gonna have good relationships? So Ron has bad relationships because of all of this, right? Which in turn his outlook in life is going to be very negative, right? It's going to be a negative outlook because when you have all this going wrong, but all this, you're not, it's not really clicking. There's no way you can have a positive outlook in life, right? And David here, flip side, of course he's going to have a positive outlook on life. Of course he's going to have a positive outlook. Of course he's going to think his life is just going to, Get better and get better progressively because he's doing all of these things, you know, to feed himself and fill his cup and, you know, help everybody around him, right? Of course, his life is going to be a little more positive and that, that path to your goals is going to be a lot more easier when you're moving like this. When you're moving like that, you, it's a lot harder to get to your goals, Right? And you might stumble on, stumble on your goals even through this, right? You might still get it, but you might fall right back down and have to start over. It's not sustainable, right? So I wanted to show this path to kind of just show like all of these things matters in your anxiety level. You're going to be a lot more anxious when you have all of these things going wrong. 
then when you're starting to, you know, clean yourself up and start to do right by yourself, for yourself, right? So, all that to say, I just want to, I just, I hope this made sense and I just want to see you do good. Friend to a friend, you know, of course I can get more into it piece by piece, but this video will be long. So now that I've made this as black and white as possible, right, and you've seen the anxiety board and the anxiety chat, now I want you, instead of this being David, now I want you to draw your own chat, right? And see where you're going wrong, right? See where, what, what in your life is causing anxiety if you have anxiety problems and how can you better yourself? Use this same chat. Do the same thing, right? Draw yourself. Draw the path to your goals and put the little sticks and arrows right there and see what you're doing right. Analyze your mind and environment. So, is your room clean when you wake up in the morning? If it's not, is it better to, you know, start cleaning your room? Is that going to help you? You make that decision for yourself. Of course, it's going to help you. In my, in my case, it does help me. And I think anybody who's real with themselves will agree walking into a clean room, a clean house every day is going to be better than a bad one, right? Maybe you're not eating as healthy. Start to put steps to eating, eating more healthy. Maybe you're physically active already. You're already in the gym. You're doing good with that. But it's still, you, still, you still don't take accountability for all your actions. You're lying. You're making excuses. Cool. Right? And maybe even if you lie and make excuses, you, you, you sometimes self-reflect. Right? So you just create your chat through this. Whatever you need to fix, whatever you need to switch... Over here to over here, switch it. Create your chat and just work on what you need to work on. Now, I promise you, life is going to get a lot more better. You're going to get rid of a lot of anxiety and depression and all of these negative emotions that we go through that becomes a problem when it's prolonged and just, you know, we, we, we're dealing with it longer than we have to. All right, so create your chat. And, and see how your confidence level go up and see how your doubt go down and see how that fixes this and gets you closer to this. So, yeah, I hope this video helped a lot. You know, I put a lot of thought into this video and I like making videos like this and just videos around the mind and all of that and really just helping people mentally. One of my goals in life is definitely to be a therapist or in that field of just helping people understand all of these things and understand, you know, how to be better, how to get to your better self and how to live a better life for not only yourself, but your kids, people around you, all of that, man. So this is something I'm really interested in. Um, probably going to make some more videos on it. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know. If you think, um, is there something you want me to touch on more or just your comments, just comment. Let me know what you think. Um, but that's it for the video, man. I hope this video helps somebody in some way. And again, I want to come from a place of I'm just your friend showing you something that I learned and trying to help you by that. This is no, I'm no professional. I'm no therapist. I'm no certificate. I don't have no certificate for any of this, but this is things I live by and it's helping me, right? It's helping me big time. So I want to pass it on and hopefully it can help you. And we get a lot closer to that, man. That's it. But hope you'll enjoy that video. Check me out on social media. I'm a car salesman too, so if you need a car, <laughs> shameless plug, I'm gonna throw it in there. You know, hit me up, and we can even talk. Like most of my most of my 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 car sales, I'm just talking with my clients, learning them, building relationships. So it's even this within that, right? Within selling the car, and that makes it a lot better too. Um, you get a better experience. So. 
I just care about people, man. And I care about I care about myself, so it makes me care about people. And that's how that's how that's that's how simple as it is. I care about myself, so I care about you. Um, but that's it for the video, man. I hope that helped, and I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from this video. But peace.